with Instigator Zine. We're here in Robert Prasanti's amazing loft. Um, Robert Prasanti, a local artist. Uh, how are you doing? Great. Good. Welcome. Happy to have you. It's a love coming here. It's always a Thank pleasure. you. You're always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess we should start with your most common uh, subject, is that your models. How, how do you find your models? Do you feel like it connects you to the community? Yeah. Um, Early on, I had to start out asking people. So I would ask people I know. Um, I was an illustrator, so I would ask art directors in the business and designers. Um, used to live in Hoboken, so at Maxwell's, I would ask some of the barmaids. So I'd run around with my camera and do shots. Um, eventually, as I got known for doing this type of work, a lot of people who would come to my shows would ask, how can I get involved and become subjects. So mm -hmm. now with this loft here, it's been great because I, I could use it as my workplace and also do um, photo sessions with the models. So there, there are people I meet and I also go to events like the Coney Island Mermaid Parade. You know, everybody's dressed up in crazy costumes. So it's a perfect place to do candid shots of people and I get to meet new people. When I started doing the paintings, um, when I switched from illustration career to full-time painting 10 years ago, um, I would use reference like old men's magazines from my collection, and I decided that I could make the work more original by using local people. So um, it's become a diary of all the people I meet. It's been a good thing. I think it gives the work a lot more soul, you know? Yeah, there's definitely more substance that way. Um, you've shown a lot of work in Hudson County. Can you tell us any uh, places that you've shown elsewhere or places you would like to show? Well, my favorite place in Hudson County was 58 Gallery. I did a couple solo shows there and um, they had about a 10 year run until Orlando had to let it go because um, he wanted to concentrate on his own art. Um, early on, I started out, I did a show at CBGB's Club in New York and that was a lot of fun because uh, some of my work has a rock and roll element to it and I used to go to CBGB's and see punk shows as a young guy. Um, same things w with Maxwell's and Hoboken. I did a few solo shows there and I like the rock and roll element. Um, Hudson County now is a little, we're lacking on gallery space so I do a lot of alternative spaces like salons mm -hmm. and um, restaurants. Um, I like to show locally because um, local people are my subjects of my work so. Mm -hmm. um, would you, do you prefer to show in a, like a smaller venue or, or are you looking to expand into like bigger Yeah, areas? I would like to expand and um, maybe do something on the West Coast that like LA or San Francisco or Seattle. And I would like to do more New York City and Brooklyn shows. So I have to um, put more effort into the business side of things and expand and get out of my comfort zone a little bit. If you do decide to travel to like a different place to show work, um, would you have to shoot models there to kind of get the feeling of that area maybe? Um, well, when I do travel, I always bring a camera and try to shoot people yeah. locally, but um, wow, that's something to think about. Maybe I would, uh, if I booked a show a year ahead of time, yeah. I would probably maybe take a couple trips out there and see what the local people were like and try to get something happening. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome to have <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, who were some of your biggest influences to growing up? Well, you know, um, I think as a kid I was influenced by comic books and Mad Magazine and Saturday afternoon cartoons. It was always mysterious to me that there were people out there who drew all that stuff. And um, I always tried to figure out how the colors were printed in a comic book with those little dots. It was such a mysterious thing to me. Um, but also as a kid, uh, like I was a young boy in the 60s and was influenced by Andy Warhol who would take, you know, a comic book page and blow it up in Lichtenstein. So I liked pop art a lot. And to me it made a connection between, um, you know, an artist and pop culture. And that seemed to have a really big influence on me. 
Yeah, so I like a lot of that as secondary subjects, like pop culture stuff, like um, the old fantastic space stuff from the 50s, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, mermaids, uh, cowgirls, you know. Can you describe your, your earliest art memory? Um, well, you know, I was always so obsessed with art since I was a kid, um, constantly drawing. And my father was a truck driver and used to drive for paper companies. He was a teamster. So um, we weren't a very well-to-do family, but what he would do is bring me, ask when he did paper deliveries, he'd bring home rolls of paper for me. So I would just illustrate them like big scrolls, you know? Um, just kept drawing and uh, like would get John Nagy, learn to draw books, um, speedball pens, anytime I could talk my parents into buying me a set of pencils or, you know, beginner's oil painting set. Um, go to the art store and buy those learn to paint b books, things like that. And um, once I got to high school, I uh, had this art teacher, Miss Fontanelle, who took me aside eventually and said, um, she hated to tell me this. She said, uh, I think you're the best student I've ever had, and I hate to put this into your head, but you're screwing up and not making best use of your time. You should take this seriously because one day you could really become an artist. And that was one of the first people that had a real interest in me and um, gave me such a positive message, even though she was stern about it. It was really, I said, wow, somebody's interested in me and had something nice to say. So she did it in a funny way, but it had such a great effect on me that I, I think it really pushed me to take it to another level and get more serious about my work and not do it as casually. She thought I could really step it up and, you know, she'd go home every day and practice. If you need some materials, I'll let you have them. So she was such a great influence and, you know, was directly responsible for me trying to get into art school a couple of years after I got out of high school. So, still loved the woman because of that. <laughs> Would you say that the advice she gave you um, is something that you'd recommend to uh, younger artists starting out too? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, you can't be a Sunday painter. You should really practice constantly. And uh, there's always a couple hours in the day where you could put your time in. It's like a basketball player or a boxer, you know, you really have to put your practice in. And um, there's, uh, there's that other side too, uh, to pursue a career in the arts is not always financially rewarding. But um, the worst thing to do is grow old and say, I could have done this, you know? So you have to make the effort and uh, practice. And, you know, if you have to take a part-time job doing something else to fund your art career or whatever it would be, you know, m music, whatever, you have to do it. And I, so I always encourage any young artist to uh, develop a good work ethic, you know? Got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Well, thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you. And Robert, you can find your work on your website. What's it again? PureSantiStudios.com. Thank you. And you can follow us, uh, Instigator Zine, on, uh, on Facebook, Twitter, all the networks. And Instigator Zine 20 is out right now, and Robert Pristani's works in it. So we first pick it up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.